Hi, today I have more power banks. The 140 watt range power banks are up today. The NEU has been long requested and the hopes are very high. Yeah, you know what that means, hopeless. The expectations of 140 watt rating and actually getting 140 watts from this more budget friendly power bank will be tested. The Amagat is an even more budget friendly option. Here, I'm really just trying to figure out if it is cheaper for a reason or if it is actually a decent power bank and a good budget find. Anyway, capacity will be checked and the output modes available to see if one of these is the ultimate 140 watt power bank. It will be interesting to see if these power banks are an improvement on the Anchor 737 power bank from a short while back. Maybe fair to compare it with the 200 and 250 watt offerings from Anchor also. The battery is similar in claims to the Amagat, at least. There is an affiliate link which earns me a couple percent but costs you nothing in the description as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. First up is this Amagat 140 watt power bank and it doesn't, oh, well, um, this is awkward. Let me uh, try and try. Okay, first up is this Bassius 140 watt 24,000 milliamp hour power bank. Good thing I had a backup in the bin of too many power banks. It's more than one bin. I'm not buying any more power banks until these bins are empty. This power bank is also a 140 watt capable power bank, but it has a slightly smaller battery, but physically a smaller size to go with that smaller battery. Sounds like a receipt for it overheats to me. More on that in a bit. The power bank is a moderate size and has a generous amount of output modes. It comes with a USB cable, it's fine, and a user manual. That gives the minimum of information. They do mention an expected efficiency though, so I can check that out. The device does have some basic power bank functions like a low power mode, which is welcome. The way they rate the energy on these power banks can sometimes be confusing, so cue the repeated bits in these videos. On the energy units, these are rated often in milliamp hours, which is just a thousand for milli or amp hours. This is half the energy equation. The volts times current amps gives you the power and the hours comes along for the ride, so you get watt hours. Times a thousand and it's the kilowatt hours in your electric bill. You can use this value to calculate the runtime of various devices based on your needs fairly simply. If you need 15 watts, you can check this with one of those USB power meters and you can calculate how long the device will run for. I used the larger one for an example. I'll have a somewhat outdated chart of devices for each power bank later. In terms of alternative features like power pass through and UPS, that's uninterruptible power supply functionality, this does reasonable here. It does renegotiate on power output, unplugs and unplugs in some situations, particularly the high power port, but when using it during charging, the lower power port does stay on. It won't push 20 volts out, but that port will stay on. So it technically works again, but it isn't really designed for this job. The Bass has performed okay in terms of its energy capacity versus its rated energy. The values essentially fall in line with the more efficient power banks on the market. These are the 100 watt numbers. It gets more efficient at 50 watts. I also did test at 140 watts and it's not as good, unsurprisingly. The basic claimed efficiency is met though. Overall, it can't really do 140 watts for the full discharge, but it gets close. 4% capacity after you restart it cuts out around 30% also. So yeah, not 140 watts. And looking at the capacity versus things on the market that need charging, it's a good choice for lots of mid-sized devices. But the 140 watts is kind of wasted because it doesn't really have enough energy to get through one charge on a smaller MacBook Pro. I need to update my devices in the list. These are just calculated, but close enough to reality. The charging or the energy into this power bank was at 100 watts primarily. It met the claims but doesn't support faster charging. So the charge time was not as fast as it could be if it used 140 watts in. Still a good showing as it held the higher rate of charge for most of the cycle and the display tracked the progress accurately. The thermals on this power bank were very reasonable. The power bank never externally got too hot. I did check it at 140 watts and there was no issue here. It did still shut down at 140 watts, but that was an internal sensor of some type. So there may be some issue with getting the heat out. Next up is this Inu power bank. This is a fairly large power bank, but claiming the maximum number of watt hours you can still take on an airplane without a permit is no surprise that it's a little larger. The basic functions and features claimed are as expected. Lots of USB modes of operation and lots of ports. 
The display is not good. It uses almost two watts as is evident in the watt out number jumping when you turn it on. Also, it's extremely inaccurate in terms of the battery percentage. It has no idea how much battery is left or when the cell is charged, not charged. It shouldn't be included if it doesn't work. Some bonus features, this power bank will charge and discharge at the same time, so pass through works as well as power staying on when the input is cut. So it does function as an uninterruptible power supply. It's not made for this, but it works. Note that the output is limited because the port sharing is very uneven and separated. When looking at the energy numbers from this one, it looks okay. The efficiency is about average. The power bank did cut out early in all the tests though, and that's not the only problem with this one. The 100 watt test had to be done at 28 volts because at 20 volts, it will not supply 100 watts for any length of time. It can't do it. It also fails to supply 140 watts ever. It can't do it. 135 watts maximum. Even with a watt of loss in the cable, it's still short of its claims. The energy available in this power bank is higher though. So if it doesn't shut down or break, it should be able to supply enough energy to fully charge a 14 inch MacBook Pro or lots of phones and tablets several times. It's not the most efficient thing with that energy and the charging may restart a bunch of times. Oh yeah, restarting. Another issue with this power bank is when you trip on the power level, which it doesn't report correctly, so it's going to happen, at the power level it's reporting it can do, it does not reset at all. The output will not turn back on at all. It becomes a dead brick until you plug it back into the wall. Once it restarts charging, it starts working again, and then you can use the output again. I understand having to push the button or replug in the cable, but for it to behave like a brick until the charging is reinitiated is a major failure of operation. This is something I haven't seen before. I thought it was dead out of the box, just like the other one, which I did get working. I did have basically all of the issues of the one star reviews on Amazon. It just stops working. The screen doesn't respond to button presses, then it's wrong anyway. The product is only like the other Inu power banks I looked at in terms of appearance. It is unlike them in that it is very poor in terms of performance and function. Man, this video is coming out great, right? I can really feel the positive energy flowing out of my screen and then into a dumpster. Anyway, this power bank while charging also did only use 100 watts. Charging was fine, but you don't really know where the stop point is because at 100% battery, it's still pulling full wattage and takes quite a lot longer after that to finish charging. Is a feature or a bug? Thermally, this power bank was fine on the outside. It did overheat when trying to use it at 140 watts. Well, not quite 140 watts, because it can't do 140 watts at all. Junk. I have seen this many times, but just because the brand has one good product, it doesn't mean they are all good. This one is thoroughly in the watt trap. Time to do some comparisons. In comparing these power banks with a few other options, the Bassius certainly looks like it's the best of the bunch, but it's time to dig into how this compares with other power banks. The Amiga had issues, so the low numbers are probably an issue with my unit, but I'm not putting any more time or effort into this one. No wonder the reviews have so many one stars on Amazon for that one. The overall energy capacity of these basically looks different. The Bassius is a smaller battery, but the Anchor 250 watt seems to provide the most usable capacity still. No, it can't do 250 watts for very long. The Inu, without much surprise, takes the win in the value category because it does deliver enough energy. It's not efficient about it, and it will struggle to be continuous, but numbers are numbers, not considering usability, it's got great value. The density and weight of these power banks puts Bassius as the winner. Really only marginally better than some of the others, but for the weight and size, you get a decent battery. It probably won't last very long though, and you can't get it anymore anyway. It wasn't going to get a video, but the other one was broken. So it goes to the Inu again, being that it's available still. It's not a good product though. Anchor's high wattage power banks tend to be heavy. Okay, so two or three more power banks. I obviously did finally get the Amagat to work. The data's in the charts. Long story short, it overheats, it's cheap. What did you expect? It's a 65 watt power bank with a 140 watt logo on it. If you are charging a phone, it's fine, as are all of these. Really overkill for a phone, watch, or earbud charging. The Inu is a disappointment as a whole. It doesn't even reach the claimed power levels, even for a second. The capacity is okay, 
Efficiency at lower wattage is okay, but the display is so far off you really have no idea how much charge is in the cells except that if it's less than 20% it's about flat, and if it's between 20 and 100% it's about maybe 3 quarters, then who knows when it's done charging. The Amiga also suffered the same issue. It's not great. It technically works, I guess. I expected the display to get better after a few charges and discharges, but neither got any better. Inu did exactly what I expected with the higher wattage power banks, more watts, and a disappointing product. The last minute substitute, Bassius, did okay. The 140 watts, again, is a reach. It did mostly discharge before shutting down, it didn't externally overheat, but did, as they all did, internally shut down at 140 watts. It did fine at 100 watts though, actually pretty high on the efficiency numbers at 100 watts, like one of the best. Why couldn't they just call it what it is, a 100 watt power bank? The display was very accurate. It meets those basic requirements. It's not available anymore, and I think they had issues with these lasting. No surprises. If you wanted 140 watts out of it, just can't do it. Still the best of this bunch, and also a skip. Yeah, not much of a review this one. More of a list of complaints about products that missed the mark. So, so many misses. Unfortunately, I am looking for good power banks, and I may have already found them, which is why the 2023 power bank best of still needs no update bar the 15k Inu, which I like and I use regularly. I understand it's a challenge to engineer these things, and even getting them to the point where they are at is impressive, but inflating the numbers to the point of damaging the product isn't good, and everyone is doing it. There's no regulation or requirement in this field, so even the best of power banks suffer this problem. Forget about quality control. Thanks for watching. Links in the description. Goodbye.